Hello world, this is Random Fix, and right here we have the ITEL IT500, and this is a portable power station right here, and portable power stations are pretty popular these days. I do a lot of different reviews on them, and my favorite ones are the ones that have the lithium iron phosphate battery, which this one does. So in this video today, we're going to go ahead and really put this to the test. We're going to go ahead and run some tools off it, like an air compressor, then we're going to go ahead and up the stakes here by running a 500 watt heater off the unit as well. We're going to test all the different ports, the display. I'm going to talk a little bit about the unit and some things that I would look for. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what's included in the package. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and give this a random fix on this tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself. Again, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything. And I want to make sure you guys get the best product for your dollar, so definitely stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. So we got the IT500 from Intel, and this is a pretty good vendor that I've actually been working with. And they sent me this, and they also sent me a portable solar array. So I'll have a link to that review down below. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and focus mostly on this and trying out all the different stuff to see if there's any glitches and if this is a unit that you should go ahead and consider. So we're going to let you decide on that. And now let's go ahead and put some of the different ports here to the test. So if we look at the unit here, and I'm going to apologize in advance for the display here. No matter what I do on here, the display, it's just going to go ahead and show you guys like that. So I'm going to go ahead and read out to you guys what it says here on the left hand side right here. We have a power meter right here, and we are currently going to be at 88%, and it has bars. So I really do like these bars better than the five bars, so I think there's 10 there. And it tells us how long we could go ahead and last for in this current mode, and how many watts I have going in and out, and that I have DC power, which is going to be these ports right here. And we're going to try these out in a little bit, and I have the AC power on as well. And wait until you guys see what's actually included in this bag right here because I think you're going to really like this. And then we have a DC in. So the charger is included as well. And then we have an XT60 connection right here. And these are pretty cool. I use them in my van all the time because they're very easy to work with. And you can buy them pretty much anywhere. This is the unit right here. And again, as I said, this is the lithium iron phosphate battery. So this unit is going to be a little bit heavier than some of the lithium units that are on the market and if you had to choose between lithium and lithium iron phosphate you would normally want to choose the lithium iron phosphate and the chemistry on this portable power station right here is rated at 2000 plus cycles so essentially you can use this for 10 years and the lithium iron phosphate which is in this unit is a lot less prone to fires and is just overall better chemistry for a battery. Now let's go ahead and try out these different ports here. So we have two USBs right here and I happen to have a spare device. So it is charging. It is not fast charging as you guys can see right there. Again the unit is charging and then we have a USB with a QC at the end of it and that stands for the Qualcomm connection or quick charge and we can see that this is actually fast charging the phone. So this is really good to have this and the second to last connector right here is the USB-C and this USB-C is the connector that I love because it can handle 60 watts so check that out it is going to be fast charging right there so you can go ahead and use your MacBook Pro and some of the newer Windows devices use USB-C the Nintendo Switch uses USB-C and this USB-C connector right here is going to be only used to power up devices it is not used to actually charge it. So some stations have bi-directional USB-C. This one does not. And bi-directional USB-C is definitely a good thing. So I wish this one did have that. And then the very last port right here is going to be a DC 12 volt out. And guess what guys? They included the connector. So now when you go camping, not only do you have one cigarette lighter, you have two. This is something I actually run across all the time when I go take a unit like this and I go out for a weekend camping trip and I'm not taking my sprinter. I run into this all the time. So I really appreciate 
them including this in there and I think you guys are going to like some of the other free gifts that they included in the little case there as well and then we have a XT60 connector right here and this is basically used to power up and charge the device so you can use it with your solar panels and I think this can almost take in 360 watts of solar so don't go ahead and quote me on that because I haven't tested it so unless I test it I can't really tell you guys and then the cigarette lighter is going to be 12 volts out at 10 amps so these are going to be regulated so unlike a traditional battery which just kind of starts lowering the voltage on a lithium iron phosphate battery the voltage is pretty linear and the only time it will actually go down is when you're less than 5 or 10 percent it'll start nose diving but I think you're going to be really happy with what this unit offers so let's talk about the light here on this side so it's got a couple of different modes low high a strobe feature and off very simple so now let's go ahead and turn on the AC ports and so to get the unit started you want to go ahead and hold the power button for three seconds and if you want to turn on the DC ports you just got to tap it one time it turns on right away for the AC plugs down here you have to actually hold it and you'll see a little icon right there letting you know that this is active now we're gonna go ahead and turn this on for a second and let it charge all the way up and I'll let you guys know if the unit experiences any glitches and I'm sorry guys about the display again but if you guys look right here this actually has a thermal gauge right here so it lets you know if you're overheating the unit currently I'm in blue but if you want to orange or red I've never seen a unit have that so that's really great let's turn this on okay so the compressor is all the way charged up when it started it peaked at about 210 watts and on the screen here it actually reads how long it's gonna go and last for in that mode so it was about 2.3 hours the compressor only takes about 160 once it stabilizes and I don't have the unit all the way charged I've been playing around with it today and so far everything is looking good hey everybody if you're enjoying the video on the ITEL IT500 please give the video a thumbs up as it would really mean a lot to me I put a lot of work into the videos and I try to do everything I can to show you guys the value that you're gonna get and if there's anything that I notice about the product I'll always be fair and honest with you guys so that way you guys are not getting misled I really appreciate you guys support thank you so much now let's go ahead and run this heater right here and this heater right here is rated at 500 watts and this heater is rated at 500 watts and when the heater is on you can see the wattage is jumping up we are already over 400 watts the fan turned on the unit it is not obnoxious and it is definitely doable so the fan is not too loud I'm definitely liking that we are currently at 510 watts and it's still going to go, keep going up a little bit until the element on this actually warms up all the way. And this is something you want to pay attention to. Because a lot of times if you put a 12 volt fridge in here and you're going camping, it will go ahead and say that it's going to last for possibly 4 hours, right? But once the fridge actually cools off, it's only going to turn on once in a while. Maybe it's really going to last you 48 hours. And this comes with the car charger, which we're going to go ahead and try out a little bit later. So if you're going camping, you can actually leave this plugged into your vehicle. So anytime you start the vehicle, it'll go ahead and charge up the unit. Most vehicles will only power up the cigarette lighter when the ignition starts. So that way you don't have to worry about a dead battery at all. This is going to go ahead and handle everything for you. And it's basically dummy proof. And the wattage now has stabilized at 550 watts. And currently the display at 81% is reading that it's going to last a total of 30 minutes with that heater plugged in. And that heater definitely is not the heater you want to use for something like this. I have a smaller heater that only takes about 200 watts. And I just wanted to go ahead and try something that's going to put a little bit bigger load on here. We're still at 548 watts. And remember guys, this unit is rated at 500 watt hours well it really can't deliver 500 watt hours because there's going to be efficiency losses for everything 
when you're running the inverter in here you're going to go ahead and lose some efficiency and the battery store energy in direct current or DC and when you turn it into alternating current you also have losses there so all units lose a little bit due to efficiency and the nice thing with this is that it's actually able to go ahead and hold this heater wattage without tripping and doing anything funny so this is definitely looking good and now I'm gonna go ahead and plug the phone in as the heaters on to see if anything happens so we saw the wattage go up and with the heater plugged in the phone plugged in let's try on the compressor <laughs> Check that out guys, this is maintaining. Wow, that was pretty impressive guys for a little bit. I thought I was gonna actually be able to maintain the wattage, but that was no surprise. Many units actually turn off because we're really reaching the maximum peak wattage of 750, and that's completely normal. And if this happens to you, go ahead and turn off the unit and just turn it back on. And now we're going to go ahead and hit the AC button right here. So I'm really happy with the way this performed. I haven't seen any unit actually handle the load of the air compressor and that heater at the same time. And I knew that was going to happen, but I was really hoping that it could handle it. And it did do a good job for a few seconds there. But overall, that's definitely satisfactory. So let's talk a little bit more about the unit and what's actually included. And this is the very first unit that I've seen that comes with a very simple owner's manual. Nothing complicated about it and very easy to read. And we also get an MC4 to XT60 connector right here. So you can go ahead and plug this right in here. And the other side goes to your solar panels. So this is a great cable. I like the fact that they included this. Some other portable power stations don't give you anything. I like the fact they included all these little accessories. They also included in the car charger, which we're going to go ahead and try out. So the car charger that's included has a cable length of around 3 feet. And you can see the wattage right here that is charging at and currently we are going to be at 80 watts and right now it would take 82 minutes to charge up from 74 percent and you do want to charge from the house once in a while you cannot fully charge this unit from the car as with most portable power stations you might get a 95 percent charge but you're never going to get 100 percent charge so now let me show you guys the actual charger that's included for the house and here's the brick that's included for the house and it's rated at 133 watts and when I plug it in and charge it I normally see a wattage of about 110 to about 112 but I've never seen the 130 range here and this is pretty normal most units like this have a 100 watt adapter so we can see that we're at 112 watts and it will take 62 minutes to fully charge this and you can hear that fan on right now and that fan is actually not loud at all it's got a decent volume to it and this unit does have pass through power so once you have the brick plugged in you can charge another device off it so currently we're putting in 112 watts and we have 5 watts going out to the phone but you could go ahead and plug in your computer or any other accessory up to 500 watts on each port here. And then the last accessory here was going to be that cigarette lighter that I showed you guys earlier. And all the accessories are going to be bundled up in this nice case right here so it keeps everything together. Let me show you guys the box because I was really impressed with something about the box. And it's not the specs or anything else. So we got the box here. It came really well packaged up. This is what was impressive. This is seller is actually based in the United States, so they're based out in Inglewood, California, which is nice when you have a local presence. And again, very nice merchandising. They did a very good job with everything, and I'm pretty happy with this unit. And before we go ahead and give this a random fixed tool grade, I want to ask you guys, what's your opinion? How do you guys think this unit is going to do? Is it going to become one of the top 10 units on the market? Please comment down below and let me know. And now, this is my favorite part of the video. This is where we're going to go ahead and give this a random fixed tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself. Again, guys, I appreciate the vendor sending this to me. I have nothing to sell. 
I just want to make sure you guys get the best product for your dollar. So I like a lot of things about the unit. I like the fact that it has a three prong plugs here. I like the fact that it came with the accessories for the chargers, the extra port for the cigarette lighter. I like the way the buns work, the handle, the case, the box, the fact that they have a local presence here in the United States is amazing. I just wish this had USB-C charging as well. It would just make this unit so much better. So I'm going to display the score here on the screen here. And this gives a score of 70 out of 100. And I'm going to have a link to the actual product here with special coupon codes in the video description down below. Thank you so much again. If the video was helpful, give the video a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. So anytime I post videos that are aimed to save you time and money, you guys will get notified. Hey everybody, I was just doing the edits on the video and I realized to some people that a 70 out of 100 is not going to seem like a really good score and I wanted to kind of put that in context. So no one unit that I've ever gone ahead and tested has gotten a score of over 90 and these units could have a price point of double that. So they could be $800 and they still didn't get a 90 and the reason is because no one unit has it all. Some have native apps, some have better battery chemistries. Well, between the two, I'd rather go with a better battery chemistry because one day that app is going to stop getting supported. However, if you're on a camping trip and that battery is lasting you 2,000 cycles, that is definitely the one that you want to get. And that's what I try to go ahead and convey to you guys in the video. But I think anything with the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry is really going to be the clear winner overall. And yes, they're all going to have their little quirks. Overall, I think you're getting a great unit in this. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you guys' support.